Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm excited to be back once again with my friend Eric Kang. Eric, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you for coming back. Well, we've been doing a three-part series on SQL Server Data Tools, a topic right. that a lot of our, our viewers are interested in, certainly a great way to do database development. And today, mm -hmm. uh, you're back to talk about a third part in our series. This is something right. we, we were hoping to get to, and we, we finally got to it. So what are we going to talk about today? Okay, in the, the first episode, we talked about the, the key concept, the core concept, and the key features of SSDT. Yeah. What is this thing, and how can exactly. it help our, our community? And, uh, in the episode two, we talked about the, uh, the database CI and CD. Mm -hmm. right. Today, we are going to talk about database unit testing. Awesome. Right. Well, I, I think that, that brings us to every bullet you, you wanted to hit. So that's really, really <laughs> awesome. And if folks say, uh, if you missed the episode that we did, the other two that we just talked about, they're up on Channel Line, of course. Go to Visual Studio Toolbox or go to the Visual Studio YouTube channel. You'll, you'll find those shows there. But hey, we've got a great topic, so we're going to jump right into it. So Eric, why don't you take it over? OK, thank you very much, Dimitri. Okay, so uh, today we are going to talk about unit testing in DevOps uh, pipeline. So uh, let's set a goal for the demo. I, I will just uh, jump right into the demo and instead of uh, talking too much in, uh, before the demo. Our audience wants more slides, actually. Yeah. <laughs> really? I'm getting tweets already. <laughs> I only prepare always uh, one or two you slides. You only have only yes, two slides? Yes. All right, we're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's set up a goal for today's uh, episode. As sure. a developer in DevOps practice, I want to unit test my database codes like uh, C Sharp, a Java program, uh, to uh, achieve high code coverage. So if you're an application developer, you already practice unit testing, integration testing, and functional testing, right? So why don't we bring that good practice, test the practice, into database as well. I'm going to uh, talk about that one. Sure. Well, and, well, let me ask you a question to that point. You know, like as a developer that, that's never, I mean, I'll be honest, I never had mm -hmm. unit tests on my, on my data, data layer. That right. was just not, not where we went. I mean, we barely had unit tests uh, on, our, on our code side. Yeah. But I guess the way that, that I always thought about it, and, and again, I'm just speaking honestly for, for myself, is that by testing the code that ran against the SQL, I was testing mm -hmm. the SQL, mm -hmm. right? So that was sort of an indirect way. What, do you, what, what would be some of the benefits of testing SQL at the, at the data layer? I see. So uh, it's kind of a fundamental way of, uh, uh, in a change, change in terms of, uh, in a fundamental way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So before, we treated database as more like a runtime that has a data and as in your application to run, then uh, you need to have a database as runtime. And mm -hmm. then you focus on application testing, right? Yeah. The data was just a structure and, and the data was the data, right? And right. the app is really what mattered was a lot right. of the mindset. But uh, in reality, your database, like uh, procedures and functions, have the business logic for your application as well. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you want to have the uh, good practice of uh, uh, testing, validating uh, your outcome end to end, then why you miss out database? Right. Right. That sense. is basically a very, uh, very uh, uh, fundamental uh, uh, thought. And uh, nowadays, instead of uh, thinking the, uh, the database as runtime, SQL Server instance as run, uh, the, the database and the runtime, mm -hmm. you think more holistically application uh, most applications have a database layer and uh, in a whole, uh, holistic, holistic view, application and database is an integral part of the application as a whole mm -hmm. solution, right? So, yeah. so that is a way of, of thinking. And uh, with a CI CD, you want to put the application and database into uh, the CI CD pipeline. Mm -hmm. and then uh, for application case, you always have a gated uh, build uh, using tests. Uh, as a part yeah. of the CI process, makes sense, yeah. then it make, now it makes sense to have a database test in your CI build so that you can always have a gated build in your CI pipeline. Right, so you, you put validation this way all across, across your application and, yes. and for sure we've all had those monster store procedures right. with tons of logic and it's right. sometimes hard to test from the app code because by the time you get to it, right, or, or which paths of code won't get to my, my SQL, right? There's always that, that question that you're struggling with is building the unit mm -hmm. test in the code side. So I guess we're building against SQL directly, you're, right. you're making sure that you really do test every input parameter you care about yes. and every other yes. scenario there. So the common practice of unit test for application is that you test uh, the program's business logic at the smallest unit, like uh, functions. Yeah. Right. So if you apply that concept to database, your store procedures and func uh, functions and the triggers, those are like uh, you know, functions in your application, mm -hmm. and those are the subject of the unit testing. If you sense, yeah. test your application with um, other modules and then other components, including database, right. then it is a stage of integration test. So you already uh, uh, the 
the graduated unit testing. So, mm -hmm. so if you just focus on database testing and unit, uh, the integration testing or functional testing, then you end up having no unit tests for database, right? So, so today we are going to kind of show you how you can easily enable unit testing on your database. If it takes like a, you know a days and days to learn and enable, then uh, it's too hard, right? Yeah, but, it, it, uh, it gets harder. <laughs> right. So the uh, the techniques and technology solution that I'm going to show you today, uh, probably you can enable it uh, within an hour. Awesome. Right. All right, let's jump in. Okay. Okay. Before we go. Uh, we'll briefly introduce you the open source DB uh, unit test frameworks. Uh, uh, it's new. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, it's my ple pleasure to uh, introduce Slacker and Slacker Runner. Tsql T is another uh, the open source unit test database unit test framework, mm -hmm. which is more popular. Um, I will uh, first tell you what is kind of a, uh, the principle for me when I look for a database unit test. Uh, uh, and uh, the framework. Mm -hmm. One thing is that, as I mentioned, it should be very easy to set up and run. Right. Right. And uh, because it has, it's dealing with the data. Uh, I always look at if it is a flexible to mock or generate test data. Mm. Okay. And uh, of course, it has to be easy to develop, like assert logics and test logics in, in the in the test framework, and easy to debug test when there is an issue. Or code uh, that uh, the, the test reports error, so so we can see the uh, the detailed errors uh, coming from the test cases, and then we can uh, go and fix our code easily. Those are kind of um, uh, debugging matter. And uh, lastly, uh, we are talking about in terms of DevOps and CI/CD world, right? So it should be uh, seamlessly integrated to the CI CD pipeline that you're using. It can be Visual Studio Team Services, it can be other open source like Octopus Deploy, uh, JetBrain, Team City, and those kind of stuff. So, so uh, those are my category. And these two framework that I uh, uh, listed here, Slacker and Slacker Runner, there are others as well. But uh, um, uh, the key thing that I, I can tell you is that these two frameworks meet uh, these criteria. Mm -hmm. right? And Slacker uh, is uh, developed by a very large uh, software development consulting uh, firm, software development you know, a firm, and the developers actually adopted SSDT database project based the DevOps pipeline in their core software development business for the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, thankfully, they made it as an open source. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember right. you, you mentioning it, and uh, it, it's awesome to see them go open source. So I guess one of the, the big takeaways here, these two frameworks are not Microsoft frameworks, right? It we is are, not, yeah. We are showing two things that are built by the community, and they're not the only two things in, in there. They're just two that met your criteria that you set sort of right. the baseline of being very productive with the kind of tests you want to build. Right, right. Cool. Okay, so, oh, sorry, uh, I... Went to, I told you that I only have two slides, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went to the we'll last We'll get to the slide. resources. Right. So, okay, so uh, let's start our uh, demo. Ideally, uh, uh, whenever you have uh, schema changes in your database, then in ideal perspective, you should have a unit test or more unit tests associated with the, uh, the change. Mm -hmm. It's really a tough uh, task. Right. Yeah, yeah, schema but changes a lot, but especially in the beginning of the project, right? Right. So, but uh, if you use a uh, SSDT database project, then uh, you can save a ton of time because SSDT composed database uh, project and reports errors for all referential integrity, like uh, your, uh, right. your procedure is referencing a table, a table has a uh, you know, foreign key relationship, all that. Yeah, you, your build is already a very rich validator for, for right. the foundational things. Yeah, those dependency issues are all, all detected by SSDT at the compile time mm -hmm. and reports it. So, so if there's any error, then uh, uh, you cannot actually deploy anything to your uh, database, right? So it's a compile time validation is a, one of the key features of SSDT. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you can uh, rely on SSDT to handle that part of um, uh, uh, the changes on your database. Then uh, now you can focus on business logics in your store procedures, functions, triggers. Mm -hmm. That is uh, basically the main, uh, the subject of uh, unit testing. So you can kind of, uh, Know, uh, uh, make your job more efficient in that case. Yeah, it, it's funny. Like when, when you're just talking about, let's say, C sharp code, you don't even think about it anymore. The build just did what the build did for the longest time. For database right. developers, we've all had many years of just not being there. So, so right. it's good to point out. SSDT gives you the baseline, and these frameworks lets you go off to the logic. Exactly. So uh, let's quickly show you uh, what happens. So for the first part of the SSDT's validation. I just opened up the person.sql, which is the, uh, the, the table source code for mm -hmm. person.person person, um, uh, table. 
uh, one day I feel like I want to rename that the table to person that persons, <laughs> the, the <laughs> S in it, right? Yeah. So if I do that. Fa famous re rename <laughs> challenge we have as programmers. Right. Then uh, as soon as I change, if you uh, notice at the bottom, uh, it's already done. So uh, SSDT, uh, analyze your code uh, immediately, and then reports error. Oh, there is a, a more than uh, 102 errors and all that. Right, so because you didn't use any refactoring tool here. You just made one change to one SQL file. Right. And that just doesn't work yeah. when you have stuff referencing that. So I'm just the, you know, demonstrating one sample, but uh, any changes like that uh, violate those uh, reference integrity or dependency uh, relationship within mm -hmm. your schema, that will be detected and then uh, tell you so that you can always uh, make sure that uh, your code change is uh, valid. Of course, the, uh, the correct way of changing it is instead of uh, uh, changing it uh, directly, you can uh, use a, a refactor rename uh, functionality. Yeah. Then SSDT handles it. But uh, it was just the demonstration purpose, so I just uh, directly modified it uh, in, the, in the code. Yeah. OK, good. So let's jump into uh, uh, today's uh, uh, the demo. So. Uh, in, in starting episode two, I started using my uh, demo application, which is a bunch of directory services that has uh, like a employee phone books and the org chart, uh, the functionality that just to, yeah. you know, renders uh, the chart. Yeah, we so, did some masking of the data. <laughs> that is right. So let's, uh, it's kind of uh, the, the, the version two mm -hmm. of that scenario. So I will just click the Van Miller and uh, we, sh we show all the detail of the, uh, the Van Miller. Mm -hmm. But this one is a public application. And we are showing all the detail of employee to the public. So what we, what we want to do is that we want to mask this information. Now it is the version two part. Mm -hmm. If it is a, a used by public application user. Right. If internal user or internal app is using the same data, then uh, we don't want to mask it. We want to show email, phone, uh, phone number, all that information without masking. Mm -hmm. So that's our goal. Right. So I make go back to our uh, solution. What I did is that I added uh, these two uh, users. So internal apps and public apps, as I mentioned, uh, it has different uh, permission sets. It has a different uh, uh, the, the usage in terms of how we show the, uh, the mask the data without mathing, with mathing, even though the, uh, the database has the, uh, uh, the masking definition enabled. So let's do the same thing that we did in the episode two, that means uh, go to email address the SQL, which is an email address, uh, the table. Mm -hmm. And I will, okay. I'm running my demo on, uh, on the uh, virtual machine, so it can be a little bit slow. Yeah, takes if a you're few using, seconds. All right. So, I changed my code by, uh, for, to enable mask with uh, close in my mm -hmm. uh, uh, code. And uh, let's build. Okay, it will come out all successful in a second. Okay, that's great. And uh, let's publish it to our local development environment mm -hmm. to run the unit test. Let's do it. So I already made the publish profile. What it does is that basically uh, defines the connection string to my local uh, machine and the deploy my uh, database project to the, uh, the target unit test database mm -hmm. and run the unit uh, to be able to run the unit test. One thing that I added. Uh, uh, in the uh, published profile is SQL command variables. So what it does is that it can control the uh, conditional deployment. Mm -hmm. If I define deployment configuration var uh, variable value as unit test, then it deploys uh, unit test uh, related logins and users. Right. To be able to uh, the run the unit test from the, uh, the test module, we need to have a connection to SQL Server. But um, uh, this, the login and the user for the unit test, we don't want that in production or test environment. It should just stay in the unit test environment. So that's why uh, we can have a, uh, the conditional deployment and uh, create user login and user only for that the unit test database. Right. That's yeah, what I mean, this, this is what makes it all work, right? Giving you the flexibility to deploy when, when you need this parameter yeah. in a particular environment. That is correct. Uh, so let's, I'm clicking it. the publish button. Within a second, it'll be done. Okay, it's uh, creating, uh, analyzing the, uh, the project and uh, building the, uh, the backpack yeah, as output, well, it's done. So I'm gonna go through the, uh, how we enable the test. Before that, uh, let's run the test first and mm -hmm. then talk about that. Sure. Okay, I go to test menu, run all tests. 
Windows it opens Explorer. up the uh, Task Explorer. It runs. OK, there is a failure. This is expected failure. Let's click it and see what has failed in uh, our test. I will make it a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. OK, so we had the two unit tests, and they both failed. Uh, one is uh, uh, when uh, we are running our uh, the code, which is uh, basically uh, querying the email address as a public user, public apps user, mm -hmm. then uh, we were expecting uh, mask the value. Right. The result, as you see here, result was correct. But with the code change, we didn't update our test case. That was the issue. So it's a test the code issue. Mm -hmm. And the second issue is about uh, running the same test uh, as an internal app user. Mm -hmm. We define that, that for internal app user, we don't want to mask our data. Right. We want to show the data without masking. Yeah, we show everything to internal and public people. We want the masking, so the unit tests need to reflect that. Right, but uh, what you see here is that so we were expecting the the data without masking, mm -hmm. but the return the data was masked. Mm. So it's a it's a the the test is correct. We just detected the code issue. Mm. For our change, we didn't uh, update the necessary change to make that happen. So let me uh, close it a little bit. So let's fix those. First one is that test. Let's first fix the uh, the app issue. So we defined internal apps user here, and one thing that we didn't do was that. Let me copy and paste. We didn't give internal apps user unmask permission. Mm. Unmask permission basically tells SQL Server not to mask, even though the column has a mask with a definition. So, so it's, like a, it's an override at the user level. So that this is, user will just not see mouse data no matter where, where right. it's defined. So now we gave the, uh, the correct permission to internal app user. One of the, uh, uh, the impact that we can think of is that without unit testing, this type of issue could have slipped through all our DevOps pipeline. And uh, uh, it was possible that customer uh, detects this issue. Now, let's talk about that impact. So this AdventureWorks uh, database is serving uh, my demo application, but uh, it is also serving uh, uh, other applications like a CRMs and then your uh, communication application within, within your uh, company. Mm -hmm. So sales team as a customer, they rely on email address and the, the right. phone number People to would communicate and, reasons. It, right, and yeah. make, a, make a, you know, a sales activities, do the sales activities. Mm -hmm. Now it's all stopped because uh, all the email and phone number uh, are masked. And as a salesperson, now you cannot uh, make any communication. Yeah. Your, it can, your phone starts ringing at that point right. as a developer. <laughs> right. It can be a huge uh, loss in your s potential sales, right? Yeah. So uh, that, that is a real uh, monetary value uh, impact for this type of change. And uh, let's look at then the sales team contact the support line, right? And support line, support team needs to investigate where, where is the root cause of this issue. If they can get the developer's email and phone number, they can contact your development team, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then when the dev team gets this fixed request, now time's ticking, potential uh, uh, the loss in business and uh, lots of pressure, now you have to fix it. Let's assume that you fixed it like what we did. Yeah. How can you guarantee that your fix is not causing any more additional bug? Yeah. Anytime right. you change anything related to security or that masking, right. you, you get a little bit nervous as a developer. So right. You so, will test on it if you can. Exactly. So will you have a unit test on your database or not? Right. Right. I chose to have a unit test on my database, so I could detect this one only. So it matters when you detect the same issue in your pipeline. If you detect it only during your development time, then it is a much less priority than the customer detects the issue. Yeah, the cost goes up exponentially. Is the closer you get to your customer, the more expensive it gets to, right. to fix the issue. Right. So we've uh, fixed the first one. The second one we're going to fix is that it's a test issue. Test uh, is expecting mask the value, and now I'm going to show you how the test is structured. And, and which test framework are we using in this particular it's case? It's a Slacker. The Slacker one. Yes. Okay. So if you take a look at uh, my solution, 
there are two projects. One is a database unit test mm -hmm. and the test specs. I will look at the test spec project first. This one is a Slacker project. Mm -hmm. um, is it just a regular C sharp assembly project, or what, what kind of project type is it? That's what is it trying to build here? Because there's I no see. there's no code in it, right? Well, there's no C sharp code; it's just SQL code. Right. But VS is rendering it as a that's a, a good C -sharp question. Icon. That's a good question. So Slacker is uh, written in Ruby mm -hmm. and uh, R spec. To be able to put it in our solution, we just need to have a placeholder. So I use the C sharp uh, empty project as a placeholder and. Uh, uh, I marked it as a, a do not build, and uh, it's just you know a hold that in a structure. That's right. basically what it is. Okay. Okay, and then uh, uh, I added Slacker projects uh, structure in that the C sharp empty project. Right. That is basically what I did. So you're basically impacting the file system more than <laughs> the, the <laughs> yeah, C sharp. Yeah, that, that is right. That is right. In that case, I can uh, check in all this as part of my solution and then it travels along with the rest of my uh, database and applic application code, mm -hmm. and then they can go through a CI-CD pipeline altogether. That is basically the, the reason that I did it. Right. Okay. So as I mentioned, the Slacker is written in the Ruby. Uh, in terms of a learning curve, I, I mentioned that it should be very easy uh, to uh, start and uh, use it, right? And uh, I never used the Ruby language before I, uh, I tested uh, Slacker and uh, the building this demo and stuff. But I could learn Ruby for Slacker usage within a day, and I, I could start producing uh, my own uh, test specs in there. In the Ruby R spec term, uh, the, the things that we call as test class and test case is called the test spec. Mm -hmm. okay? And then uh, in the spec folder, uh, each of those uh, uh, R spec uh, Ruby files contains that. So I, in my application, I use um, uh, get a direct manager and get direct report uh, store procedures. Mm -hmm. I created unit test for each of those. It is very simple. So each spec can contain multiple um, test methods uh, in the in the, the Ruby term or spec term. It's examples, mm -hmm. okay? and I can have a single or multiple. It's very simple. I will uh, highlight it. So each method or example runs when you run the spec during the run all test type of action. Mm -hmm. We'll go through each spec and then the run methods. So is what I did- Is just running kind of vertically, the first one, second one? That is, is right, the it's sequentially okay. just run those. Okay. So the key thing is that, as I mentioned, uh, I need to be able to mark or generate uh, the unit test data. You're not gonna have to test unit test cases against your production size of database, four terabytes of database. So usually what you need is that for the unit testing, you can have a, a lookup tables and reference data. And uh, for user data, you can just start with empty. And for your logic testing, uh, you should be able to quickly generate mock data for your unit testing. Right. Right? So that is a, a one. Uh, so I have a created a function because I'm going to mock, add the, the mock data, uh, repeatedly across my test cases, I just made it as a function. I will go to uh, yeah, makes uh, sense. that one. You may make it generic across all, all the tests, and then each, the test uh, in, within the expect below is just the individual test right. you're actually doing. Right. So I insert those mock data, and then I call uh, uh, expect a function. What, what it does is it calls this file, sql.adventureworks exec uh, human resources get direct report. It's not the uh, something special. It's just a SQL statement. It's a file that has your SQL statements that is basically calling your uh, store procedure with variable ID. And then once it is uh, uh, executed, then it matches with your expected value in CSV file. Mm -hmm. If it matches, then uh, your test fails. If it doesn't match, then the test fails. So all these uh, uh, utility functions like uh, matching, being able to load the values, the CSV values into your uh, table, and uh, being able to generate even those CSV uh, data during the runtime so that uh, you can provide the key values, but the rest of the value that you don't really care about your testing, you can, uh, the, the selector can generate those data uh, automatically for you. So it's very powerful uh, framework in my perspective. Yeah, it gives you all the foundational things you need to be able to do these sort of tests. Right.
So let's quickly look at the uh, um, SQL file. So it's a simple, it's a SQL statement. Yeah. Only difference is this passing the, the parameter value. Mm -hmm. That's it, rest of them is the simple. So this is my uh, main uh, logic for application to generate uh, org chart mm -hmm. uh, structure, hierarchical structure, and uh, it runs. Then uh, uh, last piece that I want to show you is the data part. So I, I have a seed data and the expected result data. I will make it bigger. You can separate out the data, uh, the mock data part uh, from your test uh, logic. So you can manage your mock data uh, separately from the, the, the test logic development. Mm -hmm. So what I have is that all the CSV files, these are, this uh, contains like a one or two rows that I really need to, to unit test my store procedure and functions. Yes, the min minimum viable amount of data. Right, and uh, it's very uh, flexible to define it in the CSV and then they use it. And the expected result is, uh, uh, it, it is uh, um, the values that you want to compare, match, after you run uh, your statistical statements, and the result should match with this one. So mm -hmm. you can define all uh, those in CSV file, and you can also source control this together. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the value of uh, having this one. Okay, so let's get back to our uh, main business of uh, fixing the code. So it was defined in Xgit as user spec. And the as we mentioned, what we are expecting is that um, instead of uh, expecting the, the, the email in clear uh, data format, we want to have it masked, right? So this is the correct one. I just uh, added it for demo purpose. So I can fix my test. Right. So and this now, is the correct one. The broken one. test is now the expected test. Right. So for yeah. public user, it should expect the masked value. For internal apps, it shouldn't be masked. Yeah, it should be the real value. Right. So that's a change. And let me run the test one more time. And run all tests. Yeah, this is, you know, the, the kind of like the user is a great example because the user could just be right in your machine or the configuration, the granted permissions could just be right in your local dev box. Right. Um, it's something that I can easily see myself overlooking when you move <laughs> environments. So having this in, in multiple environments, especially when you get to the cleaner like UAT where you have right. hopefully a lot less sort of chaos going on. Right. And you can run this, make sure things right. are still good. Oh, I, I, we forgot the one step. So we made the, the code fix in internal apps, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, redeploy, of course. Yeah, we need to uh, build I it. I was thinking we should do that, and then, <laughs> and then you, got me, tell me? you got me too excited about the other things we're looking at. <laughs> okay, it should be done by now. Okay, it's done. Yeah. So let's publish one more time. Oh, let's yeah, but, but, are, but are unit tests still proved, uh, proved useful, yeah, right? <laughs> that's right. It unit tests told us. us. <laughs> yeah, just testing or testing. All right. Okay, great. So uh, in a few seconds, it will be done. Okay, it's done. So let me run the unit test one more time. All right, it's passed. Awesome. So now we are ready to check in, right? Let's mm -hmm. check in. And uh, let me name it as a channel nine demo changes. And I'll commit. Okay, it's a committed. And here down below, I will show you. I will we'll push it to our uh, repository. Here, push. Okay, it'll be done. Great, so it's checked in. So let's go and check our builds. So now we see uh, two builds kicked off because of our, our change that we just made. Uh, the first one is what we already had in the episode two. Uh, the second one is SQL uh, tools unit test CI dev, mm -hmm. which is uh, the new uh, build definition that I added. So let's go and check it out. So if you see, there is a database unit test step added in our uh, build definition to have a, a gated build. While it's uh, running, let's take a look at the history of our builds, okay? So if you take a look at the, out of the history, there was a failed one, okay? So if I click then, the good thing is that Visual Studio Team Services with the, uh, the Slacker Runner um, uh, integration, it shows all the test results in the same build dashboard. Mm -hmm. So uh, whenever nice. there's a build failure, you can always go and check what has failed 
uh, clicking the uh, report will show you exactly what has failed. Right. So you have a full history of your uh, CI build. If any test fails, then your entire build instance will fail. That means you're not going to have a build out. Then right. uh, it doesn't, uh, the, the CI CD pipeline stops at that uh, level, so we can gate it. Yeah, right. and it's the same amount of information you get. You got in Visual Studio in the Task Explorer, right? So you right. have the full, full fidelity of the info being available. That is correct. Yeah, very cool. Okay, let's go back to our uh, build. It's all done. So let me quickly show you what I have changed in the build definition. So it's all the same, uh, except the database unit test. Yeah, when we say the same, we mean like to the previous oh, one. From the episode, episode two. two. So yeah. uh, if you uh, uh, want to kind of you know, correctly follow up, you know, uh, I suggest uh, the, watch the, uh, the episode one, two, and uh, the three. If you have already done that, then uh, um, it'll be easy to just to follow up. I right? can't help but think of Star Wars every time <laughs> we talk about episode one and two. The marketing has worked. Oh, I, I am I'm converted. But yes, we're, we're not talking about <laughs> anything made by Disney here. Okay. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Yes. So uh, I made a little bit of a change in the, uh, the build task. Uh, instead of just the building it, mm -hmm. I also added publish. Okay, I will make it big. What I want to do is that as a part of CI build process, after build is successful, then I want to publish it to a unit test environment, mm -hmm. which right now is uh, the same environment as a build agent. Sure. Okay. So you're publishing your, your T SQL, all right. the changes that they're built successfully. So the build, first part is the build, right? That's yep. the basic validation we're talking about. And now this right. is the second part. In order to run the test, we need to have something to run it against with some data, with some structure to it. Yes. Yes, and then uh, one more parameter that uh, property that I added is a SQL publish profile path. Mm -hmm. In the Visual Studio, we added uh, the publish profile for unit test use, and um, we just define it here because yeah. we are defining the uh, the server instance as a local host. Wherever it goes, it runs on the the same box. So in this case, uh, uh, we have uh, installed the SQL server on the build agent, and it runs there. Uh, even though it is a uh, enterprise, uh, my production is running on Azure or, or enterprise uh, edition of a SQL Server instance. On a build agent, you can uh, use uh, uh, Express or developer as a part of a SQL Server 2016 SP1. The great uh, feature uh, expansion was we expanded all the program program mobility surface area. So, so all those uh, most of those uh, enterprise uh, edition level of feature is also uh, available in. Uh, um, the express and all the way up. Yeah, so yeah, that's the change that folks might might have missed potentially, right? But we're mm -hmm. we're excited. It was one of my my fun projects. So right. So on awesome the build agent, it. you don't have to run the enterprise edition to test the enterprise yeah, uh, enterprise version features. of a, a SQL instance. Okay, so uh, you, you have a flexibility on the test case, test side. I didn't change anything. What I did was just to click add test, and uh, there's a test category. And if you go all the way down, there's a Visual Studio test. Mm -hmm. Because um, our solution has a Slacker test and then a Slacker runner. I'm going to show you in a, in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, Visual Studio test automatically picks up our test project and run it as a part of this task definition. Okay. okay so you just hit add and you didn't customize it besides the name? No. Okay. So, so that's uh, basically what happened. Okay. Okay. And then. For that matter, I will quickly show you our project one more time, and then database unit test project. It is the same as Visual Studio C Sharp test project. And uh, uh, after you create, let me show you, you go to add new project, and it's the same as this one. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, unit so test just project. The default unit test project. Right. And then I see. Uh, over there in the references, uh, over in Solution Explorer, I mean, right. you added a sl it's Slack run, Slacker runner. Right. So uh, it is a NuGet package. You can easily install uh, this NuGet package from NuGet installer, mm -hmm. uh, Slacker, uh, Slacker runner, and XUnit. Mm -hmm. These are uh, what you can get from the NuGet package. I have a, a setup uh, guide that I published in the, my GitHub public project. So I have a reference to do that. You can just follow the step by step, and you can have the same thing. But um, there is no 
uh, uh, additional coding that you need. You just add a, a NuGet package, and uh, the test case, which is a Visual Studio test framework, uh, test the case. Uh, what you can do is uh, this is uh, like a template. So you can copy paste the same code and then put it in the uh, uh, the test spec the CS. Mm. Then uh, it will pick up all the specs that you have defined in Slacker project as a specs, and then just to run it in sequential. Yeah, so you're making it very generic, and this, this just right. enables the magic glue to get everything right. working together. For people who have uh, uh, been using the, uh, the Visual Studio test uh, project, test the framework a long time, you can do uh, all other magics, right? Instead of uh, running all, uh, you can uh, run it individually, and then you can do, but uh, you, can, you can apply the same uh, the technique here. Mm -hmm. Just uh, for the demo, I just uh, made it really simple and the template level to pick up all the specs and run it. All right, so let's check our application. So now our change is again deployed to our Can unit go, test environment, uh, the user acceptance test environment, so yeah. that uh, now we can do the, uh, the functional testing on that one and the user acceptance test. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's very cool. OK. So that was the, uh, the demo that I wanted to show you. So the key thing is that using the unit test, you could uh, detect, uh, test the code and uh, uh, your real code issue in the database, so that before it slips through the uh, to the all the way to the uh, production, yeah. and then they're getting the uh, uh, the customer reported issue with the heavy pressure to fix it and uh, validate it. So, so there is a value that, that you can apply the, um, the database unit test in that perspective. I will go to the references. I have listed all the references about um, uh, the technologies that we used and then uh, and the tutorials that uh, we went through. So for Slacker and Slacker Runner, you can go to uh, GitHub project, both are open source, and then uh, you can learn from here. And uh, for if you're interested in TCLT, TCLT has its own uh, homepage, and it's open source, but it also uh, have a, um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, community uh, contributions, so it's a. Uh, it, it's uh, been around longer, from what I can. It's longer than the, the Slacker, uh, and for episode one, our uh, SSDT DevOps episode one and episode two, there is a link. And if you want to try the same project, the demo pro adventure works directory service, and uh, run the uh, the same Slacker test on your own environment, then uh, I made it. Uh, uh, two projects in my GitHub uh, account. Mm -hmm. So you can go to these two uh, GitHub projects and clone it and simply run it and see uh, what's in there. Awesome. Yeah. So if you have any question, uh, then uh, you can uh, send me an email to erikang at microsoft.com or you can follow us, SQL Data Tools, on Twitter. So uh, that's basically uh, what we offer. Awesome. Well, I hope folks out there enjoyed this episode. I think we, we covered a lot. I think the frame, test frameworks are really cool to see you know, the community investing in, into the SQL space mm -hmm. for us and us uh, having such great integration. I mean, this, you know, I'm, I'm sure will, would have taken me some time to learn, but it doesn't seem like it's way more than something you can, like I said, it's a, day, it's a days of work and then hopefully your project benefits for years to come. Right. right so, so if yeah. you're a developer, as, as a, in a developer, as a PM, I could learn it in one day. <laughs> as, a developer, as a developer, it could be uh, maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, Eric, well, thank you so much, and I'm sure we'll have you on again for, for other topics, but uh, thank you for being on. It was great to have you. Thank you, Dimitri. And thank you, folks, for watching. We'll be back next time on Digital Studio Toolbox. Have a good one.